The insurance crisis is real in California. And if you're a potential home seller and you're thinking, okay, I'm insured with one of the bigger carriers in the state. I sell my house, cancel my policy on my old house. Now I go buy a new house and my current carrier won't write a policy on my new house. So now I'm wondering, do I want to sell if I can't get insurance? We're no, seeing it's people get them get insurance, yeah. but at what price? Rate premiums for some insurers are jumping by an average of 20% for California homeowners doing renewals starting in March. And many of the larger carriers aren't writing any new policies. Insurance has become a thorn in the side for many looking to finance a home in the Golden State. In this episode of the Slow County Real Estate Podcast, Team Swayze will go over the things homeowners will need to look out for on their properties just to get a renewal. These things will also apply to those who are looking to get into a new home. Insurance just got exciting, unfortunately. Are you prepared? Here's your host, James Bueno. Just in case you're wondering, you clicked on the uh, San Luis Obispo County Real Estate uh, Podcast with Mr. House Swayze. JT, how are you? I'm awesome, man. I got my shorts on today. It's, yeah, you do. it's shorts weather. Jay, how okay. are you? Yeah. Great. Oh, I'm phenomenal. Good. You're looking great, too, by the way. You're looking Dang. fresh, renewed. Look at you. Yeah. Looking good, man. Tis the season. Yeah. Tis the season. Joy is everywhere. Yeah. Best, me- best dressed man in the room. James has his team, of, <laughs> team Swayze I, I, swag going. Double. Going, huh? double. Double. Double Team Swayze. Serious represent. branding. He's, yes. he's kissing up today. Yes. He's got totally. some good branding on. Uh, how we have a podcast uh, today, I think. Uh, oh, let's do that. That's what people are here for. So okay. let's, uh, let's do it. Let's talk about real estate. There you go. So, you know, maybe we can give a little update on what's going on in the insurance crisis in California, because that does impact the real estate market, right? It has. Yeah. Have we lost a deal because of it? One up in Bassey Ranch when okay. they got the California fair plan and okay. somebody told them 20000 I think it's ten or 12000 but the, that's a huge insurance. The bill. fair plan, F-A-I-R, is an acronym, not that the plan is fair not a not legal, fair. Not a, yeah not a little description if, if you like low coverage and high rates then i guess it's fair. Right. right the insurance crisis is real in california um the capacity is not there so if you're a back to inventory again if you're a potential home seller and you're thinking okay i'm insured with one of the bigger carriers in the state and i sell my house cancel my policy on my old house, now I go buy a new house, and my current carrier won't write a policy on my new house. So now I'm wondering, do I want to sell if I can't get insurance? We're no, seeing it's people get them, get insurance, yeah. but at yeah. what price? Yeah, right. and, and they can get it, and at what price? And we have seen, you know, we've only lost the one that you're talking about, but we have seen multiple delays yes. because of insurance. So if, if somebody is going to transact, they, they've got to get to work on insurance in advance. Typically, how long are those delays that, that you guys have been seeing? Two, three weeks. Luckily, some of those delays haven't caused us to lose a deal, but it could. Everything I read says, and, and you know, Jared and I were talking about this uh, before we started on the podcast, the government ro- moves really fast, right, to solve problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not making a political statement there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we don't Especially really in those even number years for right, some right now. And, and in talking to uh, uh, some agents that I know, they don't see a solution coming to this crisis in 2024. They think 2025. So we're going to be dealing with the same thing uh, here in 2024 that we've dealt with in 2025. So as real estate agents, we have to be ready to consult our clients appropriately. Yes. Because, but, because if the volume of sales goes up, that's going to make it even trickier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, one of the things that, that's happening in the state is not just that carriers are not writing new policies, but they're being more highly restrictive on renewals. Ooh. Yeah. And, you, you know, in this world of technology, uh, believe it or not, if your house is insured with a major carrier, they've probably taken a satellite shot of your house to check on the condition. So can I give you some, some do's and don'ts of, of insurance going forward to make sure you get a you get a, a good solid renewal from your current carrier? I think people should really pay attention to this because this is not even with a renewal. We got a note from a carrier on some properties we manage, and they said, you know, if somebody happens to look and you're not trimming the trees back and it looks yeah. like there's deferred maintenance, they, you know, who do they want to insure? Somebody that takes good care of their house or someone that doesn't, right? A homeowner's insurance contract is not 
to use the word you just use, a maintenance contract. Your dishwasher starts leaking this morning and you walk into the house and you got an inch of water in your kitchen. Is that a covered loss? Yes, I believe I, so. I would, I would say, yes, that's a covered loss. I'm not a claims guy, but I would say, yes, that is. Now, your dishwasher's been leaking for a couple months. You didn't know it and you just discover it today. Is that a covered and, loss? And mold behind it and all that and, other stuff. Yeah, is that a covered loss? I'm guessing probably not. No. Probably not. No. Yeah. How do you know the difference? If you're a claims person, you can tell the difference. All you got to do is look. Yeah. Mold doesn't happen overnight, yeah, right. for example. It, right? it's, it's like doing an autopsy. You can tell what causes somebody to, to pass away. So they're you, gonna you, can, you, can, you can figure out the cause of the loss. Yeah, pretty yeah. I was just talking to my old neighbor, retired firefighter, and they had to do a major remodel on their house because the windows were leaking. Right. They didn't know, in the walls. Oh. Right? He was having some problems. He got mold sickness. You know, They had to open the whole thing up. <laughs> It says, so as John said, not coverable. So maintenance. So, so this is, you're talking about maintenance. So let me give you some tips to, to, yeah. to making sure you take care of your property. Um, <clears throat> make sure the paint's good. No chips in your paint, including your siding. So keep up to date on your paint. If you've got cracked steps, that's a liability issue. Fix them. If you're missing railings or stairs, same thing. Trampolines. From no. the satellite, take a picture of your backyard. You got a trampoline in the backyard. Yeah, it's a huge yeah. one. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you for got me. a neighbor kid coming over, breaking a leg. Uh, yeah. yeah. And they got to pull them out yeah. between the stretchy part yeah. and the frame. Yeah. I've already yeah. briefed my kids. I say, if yeah. it ever becomes an issue, it's coming down. Yeah. 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 Here, here's another one. <laughs> at your friend's house. Here's another one that you might laugh at a little bit. Certain dog breeds. Rottweilers and Do yeah. no, no, you know no, the number of dog bites that are claims in this country? Well, Hal's it's been bitten three really? times. Since <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have. Yeah, no, I'm not joking. I'm yeah. 61 hey. years old. I've never been bitten in my life. This year, three times. Three times Hal's what been bitten. Yeah. yeah, they can. Yeah, they now they can yeah. smell the fear on me. <laughs> I'm a target. <laughs> And it's your own dog, dog, right? I love dogs. And he ripped a hole in his pants. But that's, yeah, that's a I've later, had two, later two pairs of slacks. Yeah. Had to, you know, they'd throw them away. I didn't know I could file a claim. Get, yeah, so, get those um, slacks covered. <laughs> yeah, a new pair so, of slacks. So make sure your trees aren't hanging over your roof. Yeah. Make, make sure the vegetation around your house is trimmed. Exterior walls, if you've got cracks in the exterior walls, fix them. And make sure that around your house there's no debris. you got old parked cars in your front yard. You're probably not going to get renewed. Boy, isn't that interesting? You can see, like, I, I've lived in two neighborhoods that are pretty nice places, and in both of them, there's places that just look like they've been abandoned. Tell me about this, because I'm not sure about this. You move out of your house, and it's sitting empty for two or three months. Is there a certain amount of vacancy that your carrier doesn't like? A non-occupied well, they, they don't house? like insured, insuring vacant homes. Right. Now, insurance carriers don't cancel policies midterm unless there's been some material misrepresentation on the part of the insured. Okay, so if you're so, out for three or four months and you've then decide to sell or it takes a while, you're not likely in jeopardy? Is, well, am I putting words in your mouth? But tell yes, me what that's like so yes. I can talk to my clients about uh, it. Uh, but I would also be talking to the, the, the elderly clients, adult children who probably are helping to make some of the decision is, no matter what you decide to do with a house, rent it or sell it because mom or dad's moving out keep it up don't let it look like it's abandoned yeah so jt defend the insurance here i so i have an issue i have a, in my head i'm trying to figure out the, the the differences between the two um dishwasher scenarios you gave earlier right you said if it starts leaking today it's covered if it was leaking a month ago they found out there was mold behind it how often do i am i supposed to pull my dishwasher <laughs> out and look for mold behind it you know, it was an accident that it was an accident. So it, wasn't that, that, a, it wasn't an accident. The accident was when the, the hose broke and it started leaking this morning. Right. Or it was leaking for six months yeah. and I didn't uh, know. Like, uh, it's, how, that's maintenance. That's, that's maintenance. So, it, so recommend everybody to pull. I'm, I'm just saying pull, pull out your appliances well, and look behind you, them. I mean, you know monthly. I, I've had a dishwasher leak over time and, right. and, and the reality is we saw we saw some of the yellow flags and sort of ignored it till it became a red flag. Well, and that's your fault. Exactly. That's <laughs> well, my and that's how yeah. insurance looks but, like, yeah, right? Let's go to that. So you got to pull your dishwasher, right? right. You take out a set of drawers, maybe in the right, some drywall in the back. Right. It could be a four or $5,000 fix, right? Right. Is that worth a claim with your homeowner's well, insurance? Uh, you know, most people would say yes. Um, I'm not most people. I would say no. I have a, a, 
eleven or twelve thousand dollar deductible. And one of the reasons that I have that is, hey, look, if I had a loss, it'd sting, right? I mean, you're having to come up with eleven or twelve thousand dollars out of your pocket to fix whatever the problem is. But I also know that if I have multiple claims, that I'm not going to be renewed. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure if I'm going to have a claim, it better be a doozy. I wholeheartedly expected you to come on here when you started listing out the things, the things to do in order to make yeah. sure. I thought you were the number one was just don't make claims. Well, <laughs> that's you know, what I thought you were going to say. Geez, well, that, why that, have insurance? That that, that, that know, wouldn't uh, that wouldn't sound very good. But you know, don't don't have small claims. Yes, it's like how do insurance companies uh, underwrite f- uh, for auto insurance? They look at your driving record, right? If you have one ticket, you're more likely to have an accident than you have no tickets. If you have two tickets, you're more likely to have an accident than one ticket. And add in an accident on your driving record, and it just exponentially increases your risk to an insurance company. Mm -hmm. That is also true with claims in homeowner's insurance. You know, the average homeowner has one claim every 12 years. So you have a couple little claims, you know, that... They stole little Johnny's bicycle, and you want to turn in a claim for 500 bucks. You have a couple of those, and you're going to be out looking for insurance in a market where it's hard to find. And expensive. And expensive. I've never been so interested by insurance until today. Like, I'm thinking when I had my last claim, and I think it was when my son was 17, and he backed up um, his car into my wife's car and almost drove it off our property. because He forgot <laughs> to hit the brake and hit the accelerator. <laughs> So I call up Karen and go, hey, he goes, was it on the property? I was in the driveway. Okay, you're covered. But that was from our homeowners, right? Versus No, it, it would have been drivers. your auto insurance, but no. you would have had deductibles on both the car he hit and the car he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got that going for him. Yeah, okay. but it would only count as one accident on yeah. his driving. Yes, <laughs> not in his uh, parents' mind. Yeah. Okay. So that's my update on, on insurance. Hopefully, uh, when we're sitting here a year from now talking about insurance, we'll have better news. Yeah. But again, this whole crisis is one that can be determined at the ballot box by the people that we elect to office and the decisions they make. If you elect people who are not friendly to the business community in California, eventually these things are going to come home to roost, and that's what's happened in insurance. So ask your insurance agent then who um, their their higher-ups are voting for? I would ask your (laughs) your insurance agent for their perspective. Not every insurance agent leans politically like I do, but all of them will have an opinion and probably help you decide on how you want to go to the ballot box when it comes to this issue. All right, uh, gentlemen, anything else uh, you want to add for today's uh, podcast? Best insurance talk we've ever had. Yeah, I was yeah. serious. Yeah. I, I had so many more arguments for you, JT. Is, is this, is this going to be an Emmy? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Emmy or you Grammy? Know, it, it's interesting. We'll nominate you. Yeah. yeah. At yeah. least those people you're talking about know how to make insurance. It's interesting, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> is there an award for the yeah. podcast? A podcast award? Yeah, but... It, it, What's it called? A potty? So, no. <laughs> that, you know what? Potties. We'll start our own. Yeah, we'll yeah. start our own. Yeah. And it's the potties. Yeah, yeah. it's um, the potties. It's one of those things the where... The Casters Award. Yeah, there the we go. The Casters, yeah. I don't know if there's, in your guys' industry, if there's awards like this, but in no. the industry I work in, there are awards. And then I once went to submit something for an award. And they're like, cool, just give us uh, $5,000 and then you'll be up for oh, consideration. I'm like, wait, wait, that's not an award. <laughs> that's you making money that's, on that, people's ego. Yeah, that's you're <laughs> awarding them $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> so I would think that it's very similar. Yeah. So I don't know. So <laughs> how? Yeah, if you give me five grand, I'll give you an award. <laughs> for sure. I already have a trophy. Yeah, we'll submit. Yeah. We'll Cindy's <laughs> trophy. Sixth grade, yes. Yeah, sixth grade basketball. All right, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. And uh, everybody that's listening, thank you as well. We will see or talk to everybody uh, next week. Thank you for listening to the House Swayze podcast. Be sure to subscribe and rate this podcast. Check for it in your feed for the latest information on the San Luis Obispo County market. The Slow County Real Estate with House Swayze podcast is available wherever you get your podcast and on housewayze.com where you can find current listings and other real estate tips. HalSwayze.com, that's H-A-L-S-W-E-A-S-E-Y.com. I am James Bueno, Director of Marketing for the Hal Swayze Group. If you're looking for anything real estate, give us a call, 805-781-3750. 
Al Swayze is a licensed California real estate broker. DRE number 01111911. The Slow County Real Estate with Hal Swayze podcast is a production of AGM Podcasts. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.